Seated on the grassy plain in the twilight of the spring evening, the people ate the food that Christ had provided. The words they had heard that day had come to them as the voice of God. The works of healing they had witnessed were such as only divine power could perform. But the miracle of the loaves appealed to everyone in that vast multitude, for they were all sharers in its benefit. Oh, they remembered in the days of Moses, God had fed the children of Israel with manna in the desert. And who was this that had fed them that day? But he whom Moses had foretold. No human power could create five barley loaves and two small fishes. Food sufficient to feed thousands of hungry people. And they said one to another, this is of a truth that the prophet that should come is into the world. All the conviction of that day were now strengthened. That crowning act is assurance that a long look for a deliverer was among them. The hopes of the people rose higher and higher. This is he who will make Judea an earthly paradise, a land flowing with milk and honey. He can satisfy every desire. He could break the powers of the hated Romans. He could deliver Judah and Jerusalem. He could heal the soldiers who were wounded in battle. And then he could supply whole armies with food. He, yes, he can conquer the nations and give to Israel the long-lasting dominion. Oh, this was he. In their enthusiasm, the people were ready to crown him king. They see that he makes no effort to attract attention or secure honor to himself. So, consulting together, they agreed they would take him by force and proclaim him the king of Israel. And the disciples united with the multitude in declaring the throne of David the rightful inheritance of their master. It is the modesty of Christ, yeah, yes it is, they said, that causes him to refuse such honor. Let the people exalt their deliverer. Let them do it for us. Let the ignorant priests and rulers be forced to honor him who comes clothed with the authority of God. So they eagerly arrange to carry out their purpose. But Jesus, he sees what is on foot and he understands. And as they cannot, what will be the result of such a movement? Even now, the priests and rulers were hunting his life. They accuse him of drawing the people away from them. Violence and insurrection would follow such an effort to place him on the throne, and the work of the spiritual kingdom would be hindered. Without delay, the movement must be checked. Calling his disciples, Jesus bid them take the boat and return at once to Capernaum, leaving him to dismiss the people. Never before had a command from Christ seemed so impossible of a fulfillment. Desires, the desires of the disciples had long, they had longed hope for a popular movement to place Jesus on the throne. They could not endure the thought that all this enthusiasm should come to nothing. The multitudes that were assembling to keep the Passover were anxious to see the new prophet. But Jesus commanded the multitude to be dispersed. And the disciples, they protested against the arrangements. But Jesus now spoke with an authority he had never before assumed towards them. They knew that further opposition on their part would be useless. And in silence, they turned onto the sea. When left alone, Jesus went up into a mountain apart to pray. For hours, he continued pleading with God, not for himself, but for men were his prayers. He prayed for power to reveal to men the divine character of his mission, which just helped them to understand. And he prayed that Satan might not blind their understanding and pervert their judgment. The Savior knew that his days of personal ministry on earth were nearly ended and that few would receive him as their Redeemer. In travail and conflict of the soul, he prayed for his disciples. They were to be grievously tried. Their long cherished hopes, based on a popular delusion, were to be disappointed in a most painful and humiliating manner. In the place of his exaltation to the throne of David, they were to witness his crucifixion. This was to be indeed his true coronation. 
but they did not discern this and in consequence strong temptations would come to them which it would be difficult for them to recognize as temptations without the holy spirit to enlighten the mind and enlarge the comprehension the fate of the disciples would fail it was painful to jesus that the conception of his kingdom were to so great a degree limited to a worldly grandization and honor for them the burden was heavy upon his heart and he poured out his supplication with bitter agony and tears the disciples had not put off immediately for for the land as jesus had directed them they waited for a time hoping that he would come to them but as they saw the darkness was fast gathering they entered into a ship and went over the sea towards capernaum they had left jesus with dissatisfied hearts and more impatient with him than ever before since acknowledging him as their lord they murmured because they had not been permitted to be, to proclaim him king oh come on you know what we were too soft why did we yield to his command so readily they reasoned that if they had been more persistent they might have accomplished their purpose unbelief was taking possession of their minds and hearts love of honor had blinded them they knew that jesus was hated by the pharisees and they were eager to see him exalted as they thought he should be to be united with a teacher who could work mighty miracles and yet be reviled deceiver was a trial they could ill endure enough with this let's why why did we not just take him and crown him king would jesus never assert his authority as king why did not he who possessed such power reveal himself in true character and make their way less painful why had he not saved john the baptist from such a violent death Thus the disciples reasoned until they brought upon se- upon themselves great spiritual darkness. They questioned, "Is he an impostor? Do you think the Pharisees were were right in what they said about him?" Ah, <sighs> the fact that the disciples would think that, after a day of witnessing the wonderful works of Christ, it had been that heaven had come down to earth. the memories of the precious glories they should have filled them with faith and hope had they out of the abundance of their hearts been conversing together in regard to these things they would not have entered into temptation but their disappointment had observed their thoughts the words of christ get up the fragments that nothing be lost were unheeded they were hours of large blessings to the disciples but they had forgotten it all they were in the midst of troubled water literally and spiritually their thoughts were stormy and unreasonable and god gave them something else to afflict their souls and occupy their minds god often does this when men create burdens and troubles for themselves the disciple had no need to make trouble because already danger was fast approaching a violent tempest had been stealing upon them and they were unprepared for it It was a sudden cra- contrast for the day had been perfect and when the gale struck they were afraid they forgot their dissatisfaction their unbelief their impatience and everyone worked to keep the boat from sinking it was but a short distance by sea from Bethsaida to the point where they expected to meet Jesus and in ordinary weather the journey required but a few hours and now they were driven further and further from the point they sought until the foot watch of the night they toiled at the oar then the weary men gave themselves up for lost it's no use we're going to die out here in storm and darkness the sea had taught them their own helplessness and now they longed for the presence of their master but jesus had not forgotten them The watcher on the shore saw those fear-stricken men battling with the tempest. Not for a moment did he lose sight of the disciples. With the deepest solitude, his eyes followed the storm-tossed boat with its precious burden. For these men were to be the light of the world. 
as a mother in tender love watches her child, so the compassionate master watched his disciples. When their hearts were subdued and their unholy ambition quelled, and in humility they prayed for help, it was then given to them. At the moment when they believed themselves lost, a gleam of light revealed a mysterious figure approaching them upon the water. What is that? Who is that? But they know not that it is Jesus, the one who has come for their help. They counted as an enemy. The terror, oh, oh it's a ghost. <laughs> ah! The hands that had grasped the oar with muscles like iron let go their hold. The boat rocked at the will of the waves. All eyes were riveted on this vision of a man walking upon white cap billows of a foaming sea. They think it's a phantom. Oh, it's an omen! We're gonna die! And they cried out for fear. Jesus advanced as if he would pass them, but they recognized him and cried out, Master! Their beloved master had returned, and his voice silences their fear. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. As soon as they could credit the wondrous fact, Peter was almost beside himself with joy. As if he could scarcely yet believe, he cried out, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, Come. Looking unto Jesus, Peter walked securely, but as in self-satisfaction, he glanced back towards his companions in the boat. His eyes were turned from the Savior. The wind is boisterous, the waves roll high and come directly between him and the Master, and he is afraid. For a moment, Christ is hidden from his view, and his faith gives way. He begins to sink. But while the billows talk of death, Peter lifts his eyes from the angry waters and fixing them upon Jesus Christ, Lord, save me. Immediately, Christ crashed the outstretched hand, saying, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? Walking side by side, Peter's hand in that of his master, they stepped into the boat together. But Peter was now subdued and silent. He had no reason to boast over his fellows. For true unbelief and self-exaltation, he had very nearly lost his life. When he turned his eyes from Jesus, his footing was lost and he sank beneath the waves.